This is what a day on the job looks like for biologist Chris Verdone. I'm, I'm gonna beat that, that looks really good. That uh, holly right there overhanging the stream, it's kind of short and that looks appealing. He's looking for this, the adult form of an aquatic insect known as a stonefly. This one you're seeing here is a new species, one that's being described and named for the first time. If I were a stonefly, I might hang out someplace like this. So right now, we have 11 undescribed species of stoneflies statewide. Two of them occur in this creek. Each species has a different pollution tolerance, but for these ones that are undescribed, those are all unknown. But those are all pieces to the puzzle and if we can identify those, then our picture gets a little bit clearer. Chris is part of a team of biologists charged with monitoring water quality across the state of North Carolina. They do that by collecting and cataloging insects that live in the water. They also happen to be taxonomic experts, so they're finding and describing new species all the time. I think what they do is a really interesting mix of basic and applied biology. So I spent a few days with them learning about how and why they do what they do. All right, so to collect adult stoneflies, I like to use what's called a beading sheet. Put your sheet underneath the vegetation, knock it, and if you're lucky, you might find something. But um, sometimes it's easier said than done. When they're hard to find, you can always flip over rocks. They don't call them stoneflies for no good reason. The stoneflies live in the interstitial spaces, but what I'm gonna do is disturb that with my feet and dislodge them, and then they will flow into the net. So, I've got a new species of isoperla right here next to my index finger. So now we're gonna get a riffle kick using a kick screen. So he's gonna disturb the substrate, everything's gonna flow into this, and then we can wash it into a bucket and sort it. So I see we've got a crayfish climbing up here. Stonefly. All right, so now we'll wash this into a bucket. This bucket has a screen on the bottom of it, so all the Excess water can wash out. I think we're good. Whenever we conduct a benthic sample, this is how we pick the sample. We do it on site, in the stream, in lawn chairs. This represents a stream right here. This is, at the end of the day, this is what we come back with. All of these, or many of these uh, aquatic insects, we have developed what is known as the tolerance value. The tolerance values are essentially a proxy for how that organism can withstand pollution. If you look back here, we have the historical record of water quality in North Carolina from 40 years ago to the present. We can track North Carolina's water quality with this wall of bottles. And we'll show you what's going on in here. And if you come back here, these are our rearing units. The purpose of rearing these, or the purpose of putting the bugs in here is to give them a an artifact, a setting that is similar to the stream setting uh, out in the field, in, in nature. We'll dump those in there, and you can see all oh, those larvae swimming around here. They go in, then I will take this and essentially just put it in here where they will live until they emerge. We now have one larva that has emerged and is an adult, and it appears to be a male. So the really important part of this is that 
the larval skin is still in here, which means that we can now take the larval pattern that we didn't know what species it was, but we also now have an adult. And this adult is what we need to look at to figure out what species it is. For me, water quality is, is about the biological end. It's about how the pollution or the chemicals affect the stuff living in the water. We, what we do is important because it allows us to actively try to protect the water quality and to also protect and conserve many species that would be lost through human activity. By documenting insect biodiversity, this group of researchers is protecting water all across the state. As a bonus, they're also giving names to some incredible undescribed insect species. Here's one. This is a stone fly we set out to capture in the beginning of this video. It's a member of the genus Isoperla. We collected it as a larva in the field during the first part of the video, and the researchers you just met raised it into an adult in the rearing units you saw in the second half. And this is what its flight looks like, captured at 6,000 frames per second. This video is sponsored by The Experiment. They shared with me these two books, which viewers of this channel might enjoy. How Insects Work is a great introduction to the field of entomology. If you've ever wondered about what makes insects so successful across the globe, this book is for you. Planet of the Ants is a book that focuses on the greatest group of organisms on Earth, ants. It's written by a colleague of mine whose research on ant behavior I've cited in my own work. She paired up with a journalist to chronicle the astounding world of ants. And here you'll find leafcutter ants, zombie ants, and my favorite ants, trap jaw ants. You'll find a link to these books in the video description below. Thanks again to The Experiment for sponsoring this channel. This sponsorship, the ads, and any other income that comes in from this channel goes straight back into this lab. It helps fund student researchers. So by watching, sharing, and subscribing, you're supporting the work of this lab and students. Thanks for watching.